All right, so next we have network choice and performance, right? So just like we had IT choices or factors affecting IT choice, we have exactly the same thing for networks because networks are essentially IT as well. The points I'm going to speak about here are security, user experience, user needs, specifications, connectivity, cost, efficiency, compatibility, implementation, and productivity. Now, all I've done, I've gone and Googled what these definitions actually mean. And again, with IT, generally, whatever the word is defined to be, that's exactly what it is in IT. Remember, I mentioned to you guys before in the previous video, VPN, virtual private network, virtual meaning not real, private meaning your own personal thing or entity, and network, multiple devices connected together that speak to each other, okay? So again, mean the same thing. So let's quickly jump onto network security. So it simply protects your network um, from outsiders. So you might have encryption, you might have a firewall, you might have antivirus, so malware software, you might have intrusion detection, anything that protects your network. So this is something you have to look at whenever you are looking to build out a network. Now, many networks are now being um, imp implemented by cloud providers. So for example, Google Cloud Platform, Amazon Web Services, and Microsoft Azure, and they will normally manage all of these. However, if you have a small company or even a big company and you do want to put some money into your networking facilities, security is going to be one of your main, main things. For example, a bank. A bank has, well, they should really have very good security that's very hard to penetrate and very hard to get into. Next, we have user experience. Uh, this is how a user interacts with and experiences a product system or service. So do I have a good experience when using iPhones? No, I do not. Do I have a better experience when using Samsung phones? Yes, slightly better. But do I have a much better experience when using a Pixel phone, which is stock Android? Much better. So ease of use. So I look at stuff like performance. Um, is it smooth enough for me? Um, when I click on stuff, does it work? Is it, is it available when I want it to? Is it accessible? Do I have to learn a brand new system? So for me to move over to a, um, an iOS device or a macOS device would be very hard because I then have to sit down and learn new things. So if I stick to Windows, not much for me to learn. If I stick to Android, not much for me to learn. Now I'm going to talk about user needs. Uh, the needs that a user has of a service or so the things that I want it to do. Okay, and, and I'll go back to my phone. I have a Motorola G100. It is fast. It's reliable. It's it's it uses USB C. It needed. I needed to have a memory card slot. I needed to have a battery that lasts me roughly two days or a day and a half. I don't have to charge my phone every night, and I can get up and go to work the next day, and I'll have enough battery. Okay, so my needs are very specific, and the same thing can be said with a network. So when you're building out a network. Speed is going to be something that most people need in the 21st century, right? Some people might prefer reliability over speed. Some people, like let's say a bank, they might not need the fastest internet in the world, but they need reliability. They need something that will never go down, or if it does go down, it comes back up really quickly. Whereas us at home, we're spending, what, 30 to 60 pounds for a broadband. Speed is the main thing. We're streaming stuff, we're watching stuff, we're uploading videos to YouTube. Speed is going to be what we want, okay? Next, we have specification. Computer hardware and specification are technical descriptions of a computer's components and capabilities. There is a specific list of capabilities. There's a specific list of things I want this item or this network or this PC to be able to do. So which manufacturer is going to give me that? Um, are they going to meet the standards? So let's say I want one gigabit Ethernet download, right? I need to be able to download at one gigabits per second. Which company is going to offer me that? BT doesn't offer that for a sensible price. Virgin, not too bad. It's about 60 or 80 pounds a month. But then you have people like um, whatever broadband company offers that, right? So we have to look at the specifications that we want, the functionality that I need. I need to be able to download videos very quickly. I need to be able to upload videos very quickly to YouTube. I upload, let's say, if I were a big channel that, that were a gaming channel, I upload 100 videos a month, right? I'm going to need quick internet. I'm going to need very fast internet. So that's my specification. I will specify the things I want. Uh, next, we have connection types. Now, most of us are going to use wireless internet. Some of us might use wired internet. I prefer wires because wires are more... Um, 
rigid in the sense that not rigid sorry they're more uh what's the word i'm looking for wires are more practical for me because i want reliability and speed over convenience i normally have my laptop in exactly the same place it doesn't normally move much so me having a wired connection which gives me a much faster connection um and it's a more stable connection so all the glass and concrete and brickwork and cement that's in my house doesn't affect how fast my internet moves because I'm using a cable. So that's what connectivity is. We look at all the different types of ways that we can connect to our internet, to our broadband, to our router, to our switch, to whatever device we're trying to connect to. I mean, we're going to, the next one is cost. And I didn't look at the cost. Um, well, I didn't Google cost because I think that's quite obvious, but we do have two types of costs. We have initial cost and we have running costs. So initial cost, again, it's in the name. It's the cost you pay up front. And then running cost, this is the cost you pay per month. Every time you have to use a service, you have to pay. So our running costs for most people here in the UK, again, 30 to 60 pounds a month for broadband. We don't own anything. They can disconnect it whenever they want. We can cancel it within reason. So that's the cost we pay. We have no initial cost, but we have a running cost. Now I'm going to look at uh, efficiency. So the ability to do something or produce something without wasting materials. Is this network going to be as efficient as it needs to be? Is this network going to have enough performance? Uh, is, is it going to allow me to expand? And is it going to have the expected utilization? Meaning performance, is it going to be fast enough? Can I transfer, download, upload files quick enough? expected ut utilization so let's say i have a small office with 10 to 20 people and every single one of these guys are video editors they need to ha have access to very fast storage very fast upload and download speeds can my device or network or service i've bought keep up with that so if everyone needs to be downloading videos at bare minimum 250 megabytes per second and i have 10 people that should be roughly let's say 2.5 gigabits per second. So can my network keep up with that sustained performance, that sustained level of downloads? Will it burn out? Will it crash? Will it just not work at that speed? What will happen? Now we have compatibility. Now this is one that's come up quite a lot recently, especially for iPhones, because we had, well, we still have the lightning cable, but with the newer iPhones, you have USB-C on one end of the lightning cable and then you have lightning on the other end, which is a bit confusing for some people, but everything is going to move over to USB-C very soon. So all those wired headsets you have, you're going to have to get rid of them. All those wired chargers you have, you're going to have to get rid of them. Every single thing is going to move over to USB-C. So the compatibility is going to be very low when the new shift comes in, right? So when we're looking at networks, we have to think about compatibility as well. We have to think about, oh, does this work with this? So from... On Android now, it's very, very simple to just grab any charger from any other Android phone and it just works because in the last, let's say, three, four, five years, most Android phones have moved over to USB-C. So my mother has a Samsung phone. My dad has a Huawei. I have a Motorola. My sister has a Google phone or whatever, right? I can grab any one of those chargers and it will just charge my phone because the compatibility is there. My phone is compatible with that charger and so on. Okay, next we have implementation. So this is going to be the time. So when you implement something, you actually do that thing. You actually carry out the thing you're trying to do. This might be work. This might be testing. This might be whatever it is you're trying to do. Implementing that thing is simply doing that thing, right? So the main thing you're going to think about with this is uh, time scales, testing, and downtime. Time scales, simply how long it's going to take. Testing is in... You have to test if the thing works, how it should work, and if it doesn't, you need to fix it. If there's going to be downtime, there needs to be a value placed on the downtime. Okay, again, I'm going to go back to Amazon Web Services, AWS. It's a course um, some of you guys might want to work on when you get to uni, AWS, Amazon Web Services. Um, their downtime, well, sorry, their uptime is 99.99999%, right? Meaning... The majority of the time is going to be up. And if it does eventually go down, it's going to go down for such a short amount of time that it's going to be negligible to your business. All right. Then we have productivity. 
Productivity is commonly defined as a ratio between the output volume and the volume of input. It is suitable for the intended purpose. Does it do what it is supposed to do? Did I spend the right amount of money buying this brand new laptop that can do video editing? Or did I spend too much money? I put £1,000 into this laptop, right? And this laptop does not edit videos very well. That means I've kind of been robbed. But if I put a thousand pounds in and this laptop edits videos really well, really fast, exports them really quickly, and I can upload them to YouTube within minutes of that, then that's money well spent. It, I, I can be very productive with that laptop. So these are some of the factors affecting uh, the performance of a network and just the performance of an IT system in general. Now, these factors work for both IT systems and networks because these are the factors that govern how we choose IT systems. So you can always apply them to some form of IT.